Hola, y'all. I'm out here a little bit earlier again today. It's really not super early. It's almost 8 o'clock. It's just that the sun is out because of our lovely summertime weather. Daylight savings time, which I'm a huge fan of. But I like the winter, too, when it changes and everybody gripes and complains and hates it. I like that, too. <laughs> All right. Let's do a little Bible study. Remember, acronym STACK, Scripture, Thoughts, Application, Connection, Kingdom. My prayer journal can still be found on Amazon if you're interested. I already have it made up for you. Um, and yeah, so and it's really pretty print. So here we go. The scripture I read today, well, I read like four chapters. But this one stood out because of what we've been talking about. So Psalm 116 and 6. The Lord preserveth the simple. Now, there's a little bit more to it. I just stopped on that part. Because I was like, man, I've been talking about simple. Simple salvation. Not being complicated or life being complicated. And God isn't. And then I was reading four chapters today. And this was just nestled in there. And I do want to say, so on my thoughts, I put, the Bible talks about simple a lot as not having knowledge, as somebody who's stupid. Not necessarily stupid, but like they're not very smart, unlearned. It says, the, I said, the Bible talks about simple a lot as not having knowledge and being oblivious to the dangers of life. Because um, I was trying to look up a connecting scripture to this one. And when I looked up scriptures about simple, I mean, like without exception, this is the only exception that I saw off the top of my search. Um, the majority, if not all of them, were like simple is like an unlearned person, an ignorant person who's not smart. And it doesn't portray them in the Bible as a good person. Like they're not in a good light. It was like you need to be wise and prudent and you need to be on top of your business. And the simple minded just go into the enemy snare. So it really isn't something to strive to be like. And I was like, well, that if I say that on my walk, that will completely nullify how I'm wanting to talk about simple. And the Lord preserveth the simple. I do think the Lord can keep us in our ignorance, you know. You know, even the Bible says that at one time God, you know, winked at ignorance. Like he turned an eye to it. But not anymore. He calls all men to repent. It's a different walk for a different different day but this one's gonna be pretty short and sweet <clears throat> I've been trying by the way to get these walks under 15 minutes I don't know if you've noticed I've had a lot of 12 minute ones and 11 I'm working very hard to get my thoughts out to you in 10 minutes that way it is more convenient for you and it fits into your day and then maybe you can spend the rest of your mile praying or talking to God maybe I don't eat up the whole mile so I said, okay, the Bible talks about simple people as not having knowledge, ignorant, being oblivious to the dangers of life. But application for me, I'm going to take one day at a time and keep my duties simple and digestible. And that is what I'm talking about when I talk about simple. And when I read in Psalms today that the Lord preserves the simple. Um, uh, well, let me just go ahead and give you my connecting scripture to drive my point home. Matthew 6 and 33. Connecting scripture here. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. See, we can mess it up and get complicated when we feel like we have to make it happen. And we have to create... All of this stuff to make it come to pass. And and what I mean by that is sometimes the workload to attain whatever it is that we feel like God called us to do or to get there or to whatever. The amount of things it takes to do that, to get there, fills our days. And before long, the priority, which should have always been to draw closer to God, that can get shoved to like the bottom so, like, you might wake up and be like, 
I have a ton of stuff I have to do today for God. I have to go visit people in the hospital. I have to write a couple of letters. I need to make a gift basket. I have to do some phone calls. I have to, do you see what I'm saying? And then all of a sudden, all your obligations have trumped you actually spending time with him. And now we're working, but we're not in a relationship. Now, I'm not saying you don't have a relationship with God if you do that once or twice, or even if you accidentally mess up for a season in your life. That's not what I mean. But I mean, you're on track <clears throat> to lose your intimacy with him because now the relationship with him has become more like about check about boxes you have to check and less like spending every day with him. So that connecting scripture to me, let's keep it simple. Matthew 6, 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Seek God first. That's box number one. Seek him first and his righteousness. So not to promote yourself or not to achieve your little kingdom here, but to promote his. And it says, and then he'll add everything that you need. All that stuff that you are breaking a sweat over and you are working so hard to achieve. He can give it to you in an instant if it's what he wants for your life. And he said, just seek me. I own the cattle on a thousand hills. I got it. You know, just like I didn't want to let go of the bus. <laughs> I felt him say to me, you don't think I can replace that income? <laughs> like that measly little income, which by the way, it's not measly to me. I mean, like it's still money. Money is money. You know how cheap I am. Frugal. We'll use the nice word frugal. I'm frugal. But money has value. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to just throw it to the wind. Seek him first. Obey him first. It's simple. And he'll add the things you need. And he's so great because he's such a loving father. He'll add the things that you want a lot of the times. Because he wants you to be happy. He wants to see you smile. He loves to surprise you with things. Kingdom. Very quickly. God must come first. Then everything else is right. Simple. Simple. And when we keep it simple, God preserves the simple in the scripture that I started out with. He preserves the man or woman who gets up and seeks him first. Hedge of protection. Does that mean that life's not going to happen? No, but you won't be alone in it. You're not alone. Life, and, life happens to us all. It rains on the just and the unjust. That's another scripture for you. It rains on the just and the unjust. We live in this world and in these bodies. We all are appointed to die at some point. So we're going to get sick or we're going to go out in some other way. Like we are still dealing with and contending with the sin of Adam and Eve in the garden. None of us get a free pass. None of us get organs that do not quit working. None of us get bodies that do not get old and not deteriorate. That's the nature of the life here. But he will be with us, like with us, with us till the end. It's just that simple. And he's going to preserve us. That's all I can say. I could say a lot more, but hey, I might beat the 10 minute mark. But I've said this before. I'm going to end on this note. I said this before. I'm going to say it again. Because, I mean, maybe you didn't catch that walk. Think about your spouse if you're married. If not, your boyfriend, girlfriend. If not, if you don't have one of those, that's totally fine, too. Think about um, your mom and dad. I think everybody's got one of those. Um, brothers and sisters, if you happen to have those. Or even your friends. Now, if you live with this person, or if you're around them a good amount of time, don't, I mean, people wake up every day in different moods, Right? Yeah, like for lots of different reasons, hormonal reasons, bad day at work, um, just, I mean, like there's a bazillion reasons. I'm not going to sit here and list all the reasons that you would have a different mood every single day. Now, we know that God's not moody in that way. Like he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. But I'm going to say it again, that when you meet him in the morning and you talk to him, his will for every day does change because the elements of life in every day are different. Like the people you come in contact with, the work that you might be doing. Like everything is different every single day. 
And so, like I said, keeping it simple and seeking him first every single day gives you the opportunity to figure out what's important to him that day. Because every day it, it will vary. In my opinion. Throw that in there. So yeah. Happy Thursday. Have a good one. Don't forget to read. Go read some scriptures today. It'll help you. I know it helped me. See you tomorrow. I wanna know you, Lord. Like I know.